Hey folks, my name is Jeff and welcome to the first video of my new series, Building a Blog in Blazor. I don't know if that name's gonna stick, but we'll see. In today's video, I'm going to set up the initial Blazor project and I'm going to add Tailwind CSS to it. Let's jump in and get started. If you want more information about the series, I did an introduction video talking about what my plan is for it, but the main goal for it is to replace my blog, which is currently being hosted on WordPress and I'm honestly just tired of paying for it. The first thing we need to do is we need to create the actual Blazor application. For this series, I'll be doing all of my development on a Mac. And because of that, I generally use JetBrains Writer as my IDE. And it's currently the middle of December and JetBrains doesn't have all the templates updated to use the new things for Blazor. So I have to create the project using the .NET CLI. If you're using Visual Studio, or if in the future JetBrains Writer should have this added, you can use the new project wizard, which will walk you through all of this. But it's the same thing through the CLI, you get the same output. I have my terminal open and the command we need to run is .NET new blazor o for output. I'm going to put it into a folder called blazor blog and I want to use interactivity mode called auto. I'll get into this some more in some future videos, but this is basically going to create a blazor server project as well as a blazor client project so that we can use both blazor server and blazor WebAssembly if we need to. And once that's created, go ahead and open up that solution file and you now have a brand new project. Over in the solution explorer, you can see we have the blazor blog project, which is a blazor server project. And we also have the blazorblog.client project, which is the WebAssembly project. One of the first things I do in almost all of my Blazor projects is I open up launch settings and I add a new profile for watch. So I'll go into my launch settings and I will paste in this watch command. I did a video on this. I'm not gonna go over all the details here, but what this does is it gives me the ability to run this project using .NET watch, which means it will run the application and I can make changes in the code. And when I go to the browser, it will automatically refresh the browser with my new changes and I don't have to recompile and relaunch the application every time. And if you're new to Blazor or if you haven't seen a new Blazor application before, by default, they always add Bootstrap as the CSS library. In this series, I'm going to use Tailwind, so I am just going to go ahead and delete Bootstrap completely from this system. Adding Tailwind CSS to a Blazor application takes a couple more steps than if you were to add it to a project like Next.js or Angular or Vue, for example. The first thing we need to do is open up a terminal. I'm just gonna use the integrated one in JetBrains Writer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use NPX, which is part of the Node ecosystem, to set up Tailwind in our application. And the reason we have to do that is because Tailwind will actually look at your code, see what classes you use, and it will compile a CSS file on the fly that's going to be used in your application. And to do this, you wanna be in the folder where the Blazor server project is. So I've done an LS and I want to CD into the Blazor blog folder. And if I do another LS here, you can see this is where the project is and where my WW root folder is. And now that I'm here, I'm going to run a couple different commands. One is I'm going to initialize an NPM project and I'm going to install Tailwind CSS with NPM. And as far as I can tell, these aren't actually required steps. You don't have to have the Tailwind CSS files on your computer in order for this to work because the CLI that we run later has that information in it. But the advantage of having those files on your computer is you get IntelliSense. And so the first command will be NPM init. And this is just going to initialize a package.json file. And you can go ahead and accept all the defaults here. Next, we want to install Tailwind CSS. That's NPM I, and then dash capital D means it's going to be a dev dependency. And then Tailwind CSS. And what those two commands did is the NPM init created this package.json file for us. And then the NPM install for Tailwind CSS added that as a dev dependency in our package.json file. It doesn't show in the solution folder here, but it also installed all of those things into the node modules folder. So if you go look at where the package.json file is, you can see you have a new folder called node modules. And this has all of the different things for node and NPM inside of it. But if you scroll down, you can see that Tailwind CSS is one of the things it installed. Now we can run the init command for Tailwind CSS, which adds the needed files into our project. And to do that, you run npx tailwind css init. And that command is going to create this tailwind.config.js file in the root of your project. And we need to add one thing into this, which is we need to change this content array to tell Tailwind where to look in our files for our CSS classes. And I'm going to replace that content array with this, which just basically means in our project, we're going to look in any file that ends in .razor or in .html and that's going to be where our Tailwind CSS classes are. And now we need to create a CSS file. I'm gonna to go to my root and do a new directory. I'm going to call it styles. And in here, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it app CSS. And in this file, we're going to add these three lines. 
I know you might be thinking, but hey, we already have an app CSS file over here. Why do we need two? Well, I'll get to that in just a second. But now we want to actually remove everything that's in here. And the reason we need two of these files is because one of them is going to be our working file where we add in our CSS. And the other file is going to be where Tailwind puts its final processed CSS. So this file that is underneath styles, this one is ours that we're going to use. And then the one inside of WW root is what Tailwind is going to put its code into. And this next command will make that a little bit more clear. Go ahead and open up another terminal and we're going to run this command. The command is npx tailwind css dash i for input. So the input file is going to be styles slash app.css. That's the file that we're going to be putting stuff into. And then dash o is the output file, which is going to point to the app.css file in our www root folder. And then lastly, dash dash watch, which means anytime we make changes to our project, recompile the output file. So if I run this and I'm in this app CSS file in the root, you'll see that it is going to create a bunch of CSS inside of here. And this is the actual output of Tailwind. The one downside to this is that you have to run this npx command anytime you're doing development so that you get the CSS changes in your project. I will show you a couple things that make that a little bit more seamless, but first let's make sure this actually works. Let's go into our app.razor file and let's check in here and just make sure that we're including our app.css file, which we are, and we don't need this bootstrap file anymore. And we also don't need this one anymore. So you can delete both of those. And then let's open up pages and go into home. And let's just add some styling into our homepage and make sure that it works. So I'll add a new class on hello world. And I'm just going to make it a bright red. And you can see here that we're getting IntelliSense for all the classes that are in Tailwind CSS. And this is because we actually did an NPM install. So our project knows where these classes are coming from. So I will save this and I will run this. I'm going to change that to my new watch one and then run this. And it's really ugly right now because we stripped out all of the bootstrap stuff, but you can see that our hello world is red now. So that means that's working. And that's all the stuff you have to have to get Tailwind to work in your Blazor project. The one downside, like I said, is when you start your development, you have to open up a terminal and you have to run that npx command. But now I'm going to show you how you can add some steps in your launch so that it will do that automatically. These steps are specific to JetBrains writer, but I assume that Visual Studio has this. I just haven't gone in there and checked myself because I haven't used the Windows computer in quite a while. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an npm script in our package.json file that we can run every time we run our application. In our package.json file, there's this scripts object and we can add a new one. I'm going to call it tailwind dev. And that's just going to be the command that we ran earlier, which is that npx command. Now what I can do is I can go into a terminal, make sure you're in the right folder. And now you can just run npm run tailwind dev, and that's going to run that command. So I'll go ahead and stop that. When I ran the application before, I ran this watch profile. And what's cool about JetBrains Writer is you can edit these configurations and you can actually run a multi-launch configuration. So go to edit configurations, and we're going to add a new one, and then scroll down to JavaScript npm. I'm going to call this tailwind dev, and then you want to select that package.json file. So there's the JSON file and the script. If you hit the little drop down here, it'll actually see it that it's in there. Go ahead and select it and then click apply. And now that's saved that configuration. And now we can add another configuration which will launch both that NPM script and our watch command. So add new configuration. If you scroll down a little bit towards the bottom, you'll see multi-launch. Go ahead and select that. I'm going to call this watch with tailwind and I'm going to add a configuration which will be my watch configuration and then another configuration which is my tailwind dev configuration. Go ahead and click OK and it automatically selects it up here. And now if I run this, it's going to run both of those commands at the same time. So it launched my application and automatically opened it up in Chrome. And if I go back into JetBrains Writer, you can see under my run tab here, I have a tab for the watch and I also have this tab for the tailwind dev. And you can also see up here by the stop button, it has a little two of me that there's two processes running. And so if you stop it and just say all of them, it's gonna stop both those processes. And so now with our application running, you can come in here and anytime you make a change to your CSS and you save it, as soon as you lose focus to a different window, you can watch down here, it's going to reload those files. And you can see now it automatically refreshes my browser and I have hello world, now it's in blue. And that should be all you need to run Tailwind in a Blazor application. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. They're right beneath the subscribe and the like button. And in the next episode of this series, I'm going to do the initial layout of the blog pages. So I hope you stick around for that. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.